Hello, my name is Dr. Carl Henson and I'm an adult infectious disease specialist and I'm the director of the Hospital Infection Control and Epidemiology Center at the Medical City. Omicron variant is also SARS-CoV-2, so it's almost the same virus, but it has a lot of mutations. No? And those muta so when we say mutations, there are changes in the in the genetic material of the virus. Um, and these genetic and these changes in the genetic material has resulted in the virus being more transmissible. So it's much easier now to pass on the virus to other people. It latches on to the airway faster, you know, so it has become uh, much easier to, to spread around. Aside from it being um, much more transmissible, uh, what we've seen in other countries is this virus seems to also produce milder infections in uh, patients who get sick. Uh, much less hospitalizations, uh, less deaths, much less deaths. Uh, so I guess it's, there's a, like a balance. No? It's much more transmissible, but also it produces milder disease. The symptoms of the Omicron variant of SARS-CoV-2 is almost the same as the other symptoms of the other strains of uh, SARS-CoV-2, like the Delta and the Alpha, and even the same as, like, say, the common cold or flu. No, the, what we're seeing now is the the Omicron variant seems to produce more upper respiratory tract infections, so sore throat, runny nose, or colds, a little bit of cough. Some patients tell me they seem to have post-nasal drip. Not as much pneumonia as uh, in the other variants. No, um, so. It, that means that sometimes people can mistake the symptoms of uh, Omicron for allergies, for example, or their usual post-nasal drip. So it's important that if you develop symptoms, even very mild symptoms, it's important to already isolate yourself. There's no time to think about whether this is Omicron or not. So the best intervention when you get mild symptoms is to already isolate yourself immediately. One of the features of the Omicron variant is that it can easily escape existing immunity in a person. That means that even if you've been vaccinated and boosted, it is more likely that you can get a breakthrough infection or you can get infected with this virus uh, compared to the other strains of SARS-CoV-2. That means that our vaccines are less efficacious against uh, this variant no? um, in terms of infection. It's also important to remember that the vaccines that we have are still very effective in preventing severe infection and death against uh, this virus. No? So even if our vaccines are less efficacious in terms of infection, we're still very well protected against severe infection and death. So what do you do if you feel like you're exposed to someone or you find out that you're exposed to someone with COVID or someone with respiratory symptoms no, or you develop symptoms yourself? The number one thing to do is to isolate. Um, not even get tested. You isolate yourself. This, this variant is very, very contagious so that you don't want to affect other people the minute that you develop symptoms. No? Um, if, also that, if also you find out that you've been exposed, it's best that you quarantine yourself already so that uh, if you're already infectious, nobody else can get it from you. Um, what we're seeing now is patients who get exposed, they immediately develop symptoms within two days. So there's really no time for you to think whether, you know, is this COVID or not. The best thing to do, self-isolate or quarantine and then eventually get tested and then finally consult your doctor. One of the things that you need to do um, once you isolate or quarantine um, and the get tested is to consult your doctor. No? It's important to remember that in majority of cases, in most cases, 
uh, the illness or the, inf the the symptoms that you're going to get from Omicron is very, really very mild. No? So you don't need to panic. You can stay home and then do teleconsultation with your doctor. Um, if you don't know any doctor, the Medical City offers a teleconsultation service. We also have partnered with a group who can do home visits for you. No? So um, we're seeing a lot of patients who are very worried and flock to the emergency room. Um, it's important that we do not do this if really you're feeling okay. No? Uh, you can stay home and then make sure lang that you're well rested, you're, you're drinking fluids adequately, you're maybe taking a paracetamol for your fever, and then set up a teleconsultation with your doctor. Uh, do not panic. Most of the infections are going to be mild and they're going to go away on, it, on their own. We already said that most infections will be mild and they will resolve on their own. No? But you, we also need to know when to go to the hospital. No? That's, I think, one of the more important things that we need to remember. Um, co it's important to know that Omicron can still result in severe infections, severe disease. There are some telltale signs that you might get a severe infection. No? For example, the elderly, those with comorbidities, they are at higher risk no, for severe infection. It doesn't mean that you're already automatically going to get like a bad COVID if you have these risk factors, but there are things to watch out for. Number one of which is really shortness of breath. If you develop shortness of breath or you develop um, difficulty of breathing while at home, that means it's time to go to the hospital, to the emergency room and have yourself evaluated because it might already be a severe infection. No? If you have a pulse oximeter at home um, and you monitor your, your oxygen saturations, an oxygen saturation of about 92%, 92 to 94% might already be a red flag for you to come to the hospital. So those are the things like uh, um, easy things to remember when you need to go to, when you come to the hospital. We're seeing some social media posts these days uh, thinking that since Omicron is so mild, I'll just get infected and get it over with or they're comparing it to the common cold. Um, I think that that might be an oversimplification. We still need to remember that Omicron can produce severe disease in those who are vulnerable. So uh, we cannot let our guard down and, and, you know, and, and uh, just get infected for the sake of getting infected. I think we still need to protect ourselves. Um, we need to remember that not everyone is vaccinated yet or you might have a loved one at home who is particularly vulnerable to severe infection and you might be bringing that infection home to that person. So we still need, we still encourage you to practice minimum public health standards, wear your mask, do physical distancing, wash your hands very well, make sure that your rooms are well ventilated if you're going to gather with other people. Uh, you need to protect yourselves and your loved ones still uh, from the Omicron variant.